Hello, welcome. In this short video, let us look at an example illustrating the application of linearity property for finding the Z transform of a signal. That is given the signal X of n, given the signal X of n equal to 1 by 2 power n for values of n greater than or equal to 0 and 1 by 3 power minus n that is 3 power n for n less than 0. So given this signal, we want to find the Z transform of the signal. So we want to find the Z transform. So let us break down this signal as two components. That is, we write X of n as X1 of n plus X2 of n. So where uh, here X1 of n, here X1 of n is equal to 1 by 2 power n U of n. That is the first component. And X2 of n, X2 of n is equal to 3 power n u of minus n minus 1. So, this is the second component. Now, we will use the linearity property to find the overall Z transform. So, for the for this purpose, first we have to find X1 of Z. That is, the Z transform of X1 of n, which is given by 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 Z inverse. That is basically we are using the uh, Z transform for alpha power n u of n which is given by 1 by 1 minus alpha Z inverse and the ROC is Z mod Z greater than 1 by 2. That is ROC is the region outside the circle of radius 1 by 2. So this is the Z transform for X1 of n. Next we compute or we evaluate the Z transform of the second signal that is a second component Z of X2 of n which is given by and this is a anti-causal signal. So, 3 power n u of minus n minus 1. So, generally the Z transform of minus alpha power n u of minus n minus 1 is 1 by 1 minus alpha Z inverse. Here alpha is 3. So, but we do not have a minus n. So, it will become minus 1 by 1 minus 3 Z inverse and the corresponding ROC and the corresponding ROC is mod Z less than 3. That is, it is a inside a circle of radius 3. So, this one is the first, uh, this is the Z transform of the first component and this one is the Z transform of the second component. Now, we can combine them using the linearity property. That is the Z transform X of Z of the original signal X of n the, or the total signal X of n is the combination of X1 of Z and X2 of Z. That is, we can add them, add X1 of Z and X2 of Z to get the X of Z. So, now by adding these two Z transforms, we get 1 by 1 minus 1 by 2 Z inverse minus 1 by 1 minus 3 Z inverse. So, that is the overall Z transform. Now, to find out the ROC, we have to look at the intersection of these two regions. That is, the ROC for the X1 of Z is given by the region outside the circle with radius equal to 1 by radius equal to 1 by 2. So, ROC is the region outside the circle of radius 1 by 2 for the X1 of Z. This is the ROC 1. Now, for second component X2 of Z, the ROC of X2 of Z is ROC 2 is inside a circle of radius 3. So, the ROC is this inside this circle. Now, for, uh, for the combined Z transform X of Z, the ROC will be intersection of these two regions. That is clearly between is a ring like structure between the circles of radius 1 by 2 and 3. That means the overall ROC is given by this ring like region. The radius of the inner circle is 1 by 2. The radius of the outer circle is 3. So, the ROC is basically the area between these two circles. So, this is the combined ROC. So, in mathematical terms, it is the area between 1 by 2 and 3 that is mod z is between 1 by 2 and 3. So, this ring like structure is the combined ROC. So, to summarize we have used the linearity property to find the uh, z transform of a composite signal that is this signal has two components one is a causal component other one anti causal component. So, by using the z transform of the corresponding uh, corresponding causal and anti causal uh, signals we have derived the z transform of the overall signal that is z transform of x of n. So, and the combined ROC is basically the intersection of the two individual ROCs, so which is found to be this ring like structure. Thanks for watching.